When was the last time a major video game twist, plot or gameplay wise, actually went down well? Most of the time we come away confused, annoyed or a mix of both. It's truly hard to play all your narrative or game's progression cards in the right order, then throw in an element that upends everything, usually at the last second, and still stick the landing. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com and these are 8 next level video game plot twists that changed everything. Check the description for spoiler details because for some titles I'm going to be giving everything away. Number 8. Discovering the Tent Firewatch An immaculate gut-punchingly resonant game that to this day I feel never really got its due, Campo Santo's Firewatch is a masterclass in exploring the very human need to get away from horrible things. Following an intro that puts you through the ringer, main man Henry sets up shop literally watching for forest fires, trying with varying success to distance himself from what happened with his wife. It's here where the game plays a masterful hand, walking the line between the expectations of what goes bump in the night in most first person horror games and the reality of the situation itself. When you're suddenly knocked out from behind and stumble upon a tent containing surveillance and personal info on Henry and friend Delilah, the game gets blown wide open. Suddenly, it's an all-out thriller, though Firewatch's reputation largely hangs on not being able to capitalize on this reveal. However, the point of the game is how much we're willing to be distracted and procrastinate rather than face reality and adequately deal with what's right in front of us. Henry getting lost down a conspiratorial rabbit hole is reflected in every character around him, especially fellow hiker Ned, who also distanced himself from society in a shocking final reveal. No, I'm not telling you what it is, you really should play Firewatch for yourself. Number 7. Now It's a Metroidvania The Messenger Not all memorable twists are narrative based. Sometimes a developer comes out of nowhere with an idea so badass you wish more teams would implement it. Essentially a playable version of Halo Anniversary Edition's one button toggle between original graphics and newer renders, the messenger's midpoint shift brings in a whole other graphical style. Representing the titular messenger going back and forth through time, everything from world detail to the soundtrack changes on cue, shifting from 8-bit to 16-bit graphics and back again as various puzzles frame themselves around this mechanic. Even better, the game's entire genre changes. What was once a left-to-right platformer is now an open-world metroidvania. You're suddenly revisiting older levels with newer perspectives and abilities, gathering up a slew of items for a final battle. As a game mechanic though, literally making time travel a metatextual element that connects with so many of us who grew up with games is pretty incredible. Number 6. Akuma was hired by Heihachi's wife, Tekken 7. Before Tekken 7, Akuma's inclusion raised a ton of eyebrows. This was one of gaming's most iconic characters of all time, guest starring in a mainline Tekken game, with Namco doing a Mortal Kombat style story mode and saying that the character would play an important role. Could he be the source of the devil gene this whole time? The reason Kazuya and Jin occasionally sprout wings and fire lasers from their eyes? Well, the reality was a little weaker with Akuma only getting less than 10 minutes of cutscene time, but we did find out that 1. Heihachi was married to a woman named Kazumi, somewhat giving Kazuya's name more meaning, and 2. Kazumi once saved Akuma, leading to the latter being hired to kill Heihachi and Kazuya. Fleshing out Akuma into something more than a one-dimensional killing machine, Namco and Capcom joining forces to write one of their various crossovers into a main installment's canon and now each game's shared fictional history was one for the ages. Now, how long until Mortal Kombat Scorpion can go up against Akuma? Number 5. Everything About the Ending Final Fantasy VII Remake only from the mind of Tetsuya Nomura could we get a Final Fantasy VII remake that's actually secretly more like a Kingdom Hearts add-on. Case in point, The Whispers. Seen throughout the game as hooded ghostly figures, the close of the story reveals these things to be the actual manifestation of all expectation surrounding what a Final Fantasy VII remake should be. It's literally Square Enix writing fan assumptions and collective will into the game, and once the party start getting flashes of a potential future, they must fight the very idea of a remake of time repeating to forge something new. To some, it's genius, and to others, it's the same level of Kingdom Hearts insanity that drove them away from that IP as well. Going forward, one thing is for certain though, nobody knows what happens next. Number 4. Flowey Force Quits Your Game Back to Desktop Undertale 2015's Undertale hit the ground sprinting. The perfect mix of characterful writing, an incredibly memorable score, and the X Factor of designer Toby God crafting an RPG that occasionally talks directly to you as the player. 
come the point where the genuinely pretty horrifying Flowey is taking you to task over how you've played to this point, whether you were nice to enemies and calmed them down or just cut right through, he'll abruptly take direct control of the entire game and just shut it down. Rebooting only makes things worse, and amongst fighting this hulking, mutated version of the character, he'll just continue shutting your game down, claiming that you can't even revert to an old save because he's deleted that too. In an industry where a game rarely genuinely surprises you, in a way where you're supposed to keep poking and prodding until something different happens, Undertale's final boss stands out as a risk that paid off. Number 3. You need to wait 8 hours to play again. Super hot Mind Control Delete there's absolutely a way to read Superhot Team as a developer that hates their fans, and hates that they've been forced to make another Superhot game through sheer popularity. Because Superhot Mind Control Delete is designed to tire you out and wear you down, designed to see just how much of a game's formula you can stand until you genuinely don't want to keep playing. At the core is a comment on how addictive video game violence can be, and by the end you'll be taken into a fake version of the game's code and forced to initiate a reboot to play more. It's here where the developers asked fans to sit and wait 8 real world hours for the game to recover itself. There was an understandable backlash to which they reduced that number to 2 hours, but unless you find some hidden minigames, which I didn't, you're better off just putting a movie on and waiting it out for actual completion. Number 2. It was the end of the world. Far Cry 5. The jury's out on whether Far Cry 6 will make meaningful changes to the increasingly tired formula of crazy cult leader talks to you in first person before you take them down after 50 hours of climbing towers, but Far Cry 5 at least tried something with its narrative. I say something because before launch it was this lightning rod of potential commentary on the underbelly of American extremism. Cut to when we all played though, and Joseph Seed was yet another monologuing villain with a zombie-like following, the only thing elevating him being that he was adamant the world was ending. Hours of bullets and bodies later, as you try to take him into custody, he was right. A rogue nuclear explosion goes off behind him, and as Seed stares your character in the face, the environment goes from American Midwest to all-out apocalypse with falling debris and burning trees in seconds. Providing you didn't choose the leave ending beforehand, Far Cry 5 closes out with you and Seed trapped in an underground bunker, awaiting the end of days. Number 1. You're the baby and Mads Mikkelsen is your dad. Death Stranding. The more distance we get from Death Stranding, the more the whole thing feels like one big fever dream. A large-scale hiking simulator filled with everybody from Conan O'Brien to Jeff Keighley, where in between throwing poop and blood grenades at ghosts, you could take showers and rock a baby to sleep with your controller. Oh, and it's also a human species-wide commentary on the inevitability of extinction wiping us all off the face of the planet, so you best get to embracing the person next to you because who knows what's gonna happen tomorrow. Yes, Hideo Kojima's first post-Konami solo project felt every bit like an experimental jazz album his main outfit would never allow, and it closes out with the time-bending reveal that you are actually the baby you've been carrying around all this time. The explanation is complete insanity, but let's just dive in. It involves a baby Norman Reedus being shot in the past, the Amelie character reviving his spirit, some time and space shenanigans then lining things back up in the present, but also the baby was Mads Mikkelsen's son, and the reason he's called Cliff is because old Norman going back in time saved him from going over a metaphorical cliff. I for one both love and hate Death Stranding for the exact same reasons. And those are just a collection of 8 video game twists that came out of nowhere. Let me know your favourites down in the comments below and please check out the What Culture Gaming podcast. For now, I've been Scott from whatculture.com and I'll catch you soon.